Okay, we're here for another video of dividing, but this time we're going to add some decimals, and our answer is not going to be a whole number with a remainder of zero. We're going to see what happens when um, our remainder is not zero, and how we can add some decimals to that to make our answer super precise. So again, everything um, that I have written down, you need to have on your paper. I already got a head start on you guys, so feel free to pause this at any time and get caught up. My first practice problem is 13 over 4, or 13 divided by 4. And in, written in the box is my 13, which is my numerator. My top number always goes in that box there. And then my denominator, my divisor, goes on the outside. I've got my footprints over the 1 and the 3, where I'm going to fill in some numbers and make sure that my work is organized. And then lastly, I'm going to write my acronym that's going to help me do this long division problem, which is, does McDonald's sell cheese burgers? Okay, here we go, jumping in. Four divided by one, that cannot happen, so I'm gonna write a zero. You can't divide four into one evenly. So when that happens, I move on to the double digit number. Four divided by 13, estimating how many times four goes into 13. Well, I know that four times three is 12, and remember we don't want to go over that number there, so 12 is going to be my magic number, so it goes in three times. So there's division. Multiplying three times four is 12. Check. I'm going to subtract now. 13 minus 12 is 1. Check. Check being 1 is less than 4, so we're good. And then bring down. Now here's where it gets tricky. We have nothing to bring down, but we still have that remainder there. If that was 0, we'd be done. But we don't have the remainder of 0. We Right now we have a remainder of 1. But we're not dealing with remainders when we're dividing with decimals. We need to do something with that 1. So what we're going to do is add some decimal points to our dividend and our answer. So when you get down to this point, I'm going to add a decimal point, and I'm going to add a zero. I haven't changed this 13 at all. I've just added some zeros to it, which is going to help me divide. I could add zeros forever and ever and ever to the end of this number, and it's not going to change the value. Um, we're going to see how this is going to be helpful to us. So what I've done is I've added the decimal, I've added the zero, and once I added that decimal point, I'm going to pop that up into my answer as well. So I've added a zero and now I can bring that zero down. I've basically added a number that I can use to help me divide. So I'm bring that down and 10. Check. Once I bring down my number, I start over again and I do four into 10. Four divided by 10, how many times does four go into 10 without going over? Well, it goes in twice and I forgot to add my little uh, footprint in there to make sure that everything's all straight and organized. Divided, so now I'm going to multiplying. 2 times 4 is 8. I'm subtracting at this point. 10 minus 8 is 2. Checking 2 is less than 4. We're good, but we're ready to bring something down, but we don't have anything else to bring down. And we have that 2 as our remainder. We want to get rid of that 2. So I'm going to do the same thing that we did up here. As I mentioned, we can add zeros forever if we want without changing the value of our 13 here. So I added another footprint, and now I'm going to bring that zero down. And we want to add as many zeros as it takes to get a remainder of zero, and I think we're going to get one here soon. So we brought the number down, we start the process over again. 4 goes into 25 times, 5 times 4 is 20, subtract, 0, no, no, no remainder, nothing to bring down, now we are done. And that is our answer, 3.25, or 3 and 25 hundredths is our answer for 13 divided by 4, okay? Again, what we did differently this time is we added a decimal point and we added on a couple zeros to help us divide that uneven number. Cool. Let's do one more. I'm going to do 
what am I going to do? I'm going to do 1 over 5. Now, this looks like a fraction. It is a fraction. But it's the same idea where that top number, the numerator, always goes inside the box. And right off the bat, I know that that 1, I'm going to add the 5 out there, I know that that 1 is not enough to go into 5. That's why it looks kind of weird in here. But given that we know that we can add a decimal point and some zeros, I'm going to do that right off the bat. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and add 2 just in case I need them. Wherever I, my decimal place is, that gets popped up. And I can add my footprints for my place values there. Okay? And I'll just write again, does McDonald's sell cheese burgers? If you're having trouble with long division, I highly recommend you put this acronym down. It's really going to be helpful. Okay, we've set it up. We are ready to divide. 5 goes into 1 zero times. So that means I need to move on to the double digit. So now I'm looking at the 10 here. It looks a little confusing because there's a decimal place, but we're treating the 1 and the 0 like a 10. 5 goes into 10 two times. Now I'm multiplying. 2 times 5 is 10. Now I'm subtracting. 10 minus 10 is 0. 0 is definitely less than 5, so the checks there is good. And hey, I've got nothing remainder, and I don't have anything to bring down other than those zeros. Once I get to this point where I have a remainder of 0 and there's nothing left to bring down other than those zeros, I am done. There's my answer right there. 2 tenths, or 0.2, is my final answer for 1 over 5. And that's that.